You're listening to The Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 30th of June, 2023, and episode 23 of The Observing Eye. If you're new, welcome aboard. If you're returning, welcome back. As always, I like to start these episodes with a brief moment of reflection. So, let's spend a few moments thinking about the good things that have happened this past week. And now, a moment for the not-so-good. If you followed on from the previous couple of episodes, you'll probably have noticed that there is a little theme around affirmations. So in this episode, I'd like to talk about my own personal affirmation, my own personal mantra, meaning to protect the mind, which is, do the work. That's it. Very simple, three words, easy to remember, easy to just recite to yourself when things are getting a bit challenging, or when I'm feeling like the procrastination is kicking in. Do the work. It's an affirmation or mantra I'm sure that all of you have come across who are listening to this, and in my mind, it is the most powerful mantra that I have in my arsenal. To me, the wonderful thing about it is it is very broad spectrum. It's a scattergun. It can be applied to pretty much anything that you're doing in life. It can be personal growth, professional development, relationship building, health and fitness, spiritual practice, all of it, creative endeavors, everything. All of the things in my life come under the umbrella of do the work. Not only does Do The Work cover the general plethora of life's things and stuff that, you know, comes up, on a deeper level, to me, it also refers to things like personal introspection and self-improvement. Do The Work means confronting personal issues. It means working through challenges. It means making efforts to grow emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. It's an encouragement to actively engage in efforts towards my goals or my self-betterment, even when it's difficult or uncomfortable. And we are going to get to that in some depth a bit later on in this episode. So essentially, do the work is a call to action, right? It pushes us to take active steps towards our goals and not to shy away from challenges or from effort. Do the work is about commitment. It's about showing up and it's about doing what is necessary to progress, succeed, or improve. So do the work. But what stops us doing the work then? In my mind, two things. Two things that stop us doing the work. One is internal resistance, and that can be anything from fear, self-doubt, procrastination, distractions, any sort of like timidity or shyness or... uh, self-loathing or perfectionism, all of this, all of these negative things are resistance, internal resistance, okay? The other thing that stops us doing the work is boundaries, or our boundaries, I should say. There are many, not one. Boundaries are around managing our expectations with respect to the needs and demands of others. And others can be family, friends, work, what have you. So we need to make sure that we are exercising a certain amount of selfishness in doing the work. We have to ensure, if we want to, that we create time for us to be able to do whatever work it is that we set out on ourselves or for ourselves. And the way that I look at it, and I've mentioned this before, it is not a negative thing 
for us to be selfish when the selfishness is directed towards our own improvement or betterment. I mean, yes, it's selfishness in itself is not great. You know, don't hoard all of the sweets from the children, but it's okay to be selfish with your time when you're working on you. Because fundamentally, the way that I see it is that if we are selfish with our time when it comes to improving ourselves, then fundamentally that time spent makes us better human beings and puts us in a better position which in turn better enables us to help others down the road. So I see selfishness in this regard as a means to support others by putting ourselves in a position to be able to do it, both emotionally, intellectually, or financially, or what have you. All of these things, if we do the work and make ourselves better, make our situation, our position better, enables us to support others through that action. So being selfish is not necessarily selfish in this context, okay? So those are our two things. Two things that stop us from doing the work. Internal resistance and shitty boundaries, okay? So now we understand what do the work means and we understand what stops us from doing the work. How do we start the work? There's a question. Now I've got a, I put together a, a little list of things that I think are relevant to this and I'm going to run through them. So bear with me on this one. Now, the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to doing the work, and this works for me, so, you know, all of this comes from my experience, so it may not necessarily be ideal for you, but if I can impart some wisdom through it or you get something from it, then I've done my job. That's perfect. So first thing then, think like a child. And I don't mean give me the goddamn Flintstones phone or I'm going to Crayola your face, okay? Thinking like a child means to believe in the unbelievable, and what I mean by that is that, you know, so when you're a kid, when I was a kid, right, and I think I'm going to be an astronaut, there was absolutely zero doubt in my mind. I was genuinely convinced that if I, if I said I'm going to be an astronaut, then it would happen, okay? As we get older, the world teaches us cynicism, and it teaches us doubt. But when we do the work... If we start with a mindset of cynicism and doubt about the outcome, about the goal, then we're immediately putting up an internal resistance. So for me, I've got to go into any venture where I am applying this mantra of do the work with that mindset of it's going to happen. And this isn't any sort of like manifesting shit. I talked about this extensively in the last episode. I am not sitting here going, well, I believe it, henceforth it will become true. What I'm doing is that internally I am setting up certainty before I start. So there's no doubt, there's no thoughts that it's not going to come to pass. I have to say to myself, okay, I'm just going to do this and, and that's it, it's going to be an outcome. So the outcome has to be certain. Because if I go into it with any sort of quibbles or doubts or, you know, fumblings in my mind around it, then immediately I'm procrastinating and it's not going to happen. So for me, I have to say with all certainty that this outcome is going to occur for me. And generally the outcome, just to give you some context, the outcome is going to be something that I am in complete control over. So the outcome would be, I'm going to finish this book. I talk about this because it is something I'm working on at the moment, and hopefully you'll hear more about it in, in the near future. So the outcome is, I'm going to work on this book, or I'm going to be putting more time into exercise. I'm going to do more meditation. That's To me, that's doing the work. It's not, I'm going to be a millionaire. I mean, that's bullshit, right? I've got no control over that other than the work I do to get there. So... When I say certainty, I'm talking about stuff that I can control, not the universe at large, okay? So let's be very clear on that. The next thing I do is I don't spend lots of time preparing before I start. I just go, okay? Now, in my mind, preparation for me can be a disguise for procrastination. It can be procrastination turning up in a nice suit with with a cat and a briefcase. It's... It's a, a visage, okay? So if I spend too much time preparing, I can get lost in a whirlwind of preparation and never actually get anything going. 
you know, I'll sit there going, well, it's not quite ready to start. I need to think about this. I've got to put this in place. There's more to consider. For me, absolutely not. Stop considering, start doing. Okay, do the work. The other thing I find is I need to stop chatting to myself and I have to start thinking. So there's a distinct difference between the internal monologue, like our mind chatter, and thinking. So we can talk to ourselves as much as we like, but it doesn't get us thinking about the problem we're trying to solve. It doesn't get us thinking about the goal or the work, okay? So I meditate a lot, as some of you who've been here before probably have heard me talk about. And if you've ever meditated, you will distinctly know the difference between when the mind is in witness mode and when it's in chatter mode. So the real content doesn't come from the monologue. It comes from like some divine place. It's like somewhere in the pit of the stomach. It just kind of flows out of you. If any of you are creative out there and you've done creative stuff, you'll know exactly what I mean about the flow state. Same with sports stuff and training, whatever. You get in that flow state, it just works. It's like you're not engaging. It's just happening through you. And that's thinking to me. That's thought. Talking to yourself, you know, having that little interior monologue when you just run things through, that is not thinking. That's chat. And that's the distinct difference here. Okay. We need to stop being editorial. And I was a fucker for this. Uh, and it's taken me a long time to get to a point where I am no longer doing this. Probably mid thirties, I stopped this and I'm a little bit older than that now. So when we're editorial, we're not productive. We are constantly going back into that chatter mode and we're editing what we've done and nothing moves forwards. So we need to just get on with it and see what happens and stop going back and recursively editing everything that we've we've put out there or put together. The next thing is that we need to be uncomfortable. Doing the work is not about sitting in the comfort zone. The Pema Chodron, who is a Buddhist nun in, um, I think is Nova Scotia. She was, a, or she is, I should say, she's a member of um, the Shambhala school. She was a, a student of uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche. And she says something really wonderful about the comfort zone. And she says that we have to continually throw ourselves from the nest. And what she means by that is that when we move into a place of discomfort, when we're challenging ourselves outside of our comfort zone, we eventually become used to it. The discomfort becomes comfortable. We're in the nest, essentially. So when we get here, we have to throw ourselves out of it again, back into discomfort until that becomes comfortable again. Our comfort zone needs to be continually expanding as we push ourselves into those spaces of discomfort. So doing the work is not comfortable and we have to be okay to sit with that discomfort. We have to remember the process, always remember the process, act, reflect, act, reflect, iteratively, do it over and over again. It's no good to just keep acting. I know I spoke earlier about, you know, just doing. Yes, it's important to just do, but if we keep doing and we don't think about where we're going, then we can end up in a place where we don't necessarily want to be. So it's important to do the work and then reflect on it, and then do the work, and then reflect on it as a, as a process, okay? So act, reflect, act, reflect. That's your, that's your process. And lastly, we just need to keep working, keep doing the work. Doesn't matter if we don't feel like it. There are going to be days when we don't. Just do it. Push through. Be disciplined. Be committed. Do the work. We need to stop starting and start finishing. Keep going until whatever it is, is complete. Whatever our work is, whatever our goal is, keep doing it until we get there. There's going to be times when we want to give up. There's going to be self-doubt. That's going to kick in. There's going to be days when the ideas don't come, when the flow state is beyond our reach. There's going to be times when life just gets in the way. Some obstacle comes along and it feels completely insurmountable. But remember, as I've said before, the obstacle is the way. Keep going, push through, trust yourself, do the work. And lastly, remember, time is not your ally. Death is certain. Do not get to the end with a head full of regrets. Make life meaningful. Do the work.
And that's all for today, everybody. As always, thank you for joining me. Your time and attention is always greatly appreciated. I hope that there has been something in this that you can take away and think about and potentially use for your own betterment. That is why I am here. Wishing you all a fabulous weekend. Make sure that you spend some time doing the work this weekend. Think about it. Think about what your goals are. Think about what it is that you want, how you can self-improve, self-better. What is this thing that you've aspired to do that you've never quite got around to doing? Make this weekend the weekend when you begin. Do the work. Much love, everybody, and I'll catch you soon. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that you found it useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writings or work around psychology and philosophy and general day-to-day living, please go and take a look at my Substack, which is theobservingeye.substack.com. And that's I as in the letter, not I as in each gelatinous organ through which you see. Take care, everybody. Much love. And I'll see you soon.